Hello fantastic people, I hope you are doing great. Currently I am reworking my older game One Bad Dwarf. As a part of that project I had to develop simple dialogue boxes which can be used to share the story with the player. I don't like manual work so I wanted them to scale correctly depending on the number of lines in the current phrase. So let's learn how to do that while creating simplified version of what I'm using in my game. I start by creating new canvas and call it Dialogue Canvas. Then to have clear view I disable main camera and walls background. Inside of our newly created canvas I add the text Text Mesh Pro. I change its name to Dialogue Text. I change its width to 500 and then adjust the font. For the horizontal alignment I select the Justified and for the vertical I select the Center. I added the UI image as a child of the dialogue text. Now I need to prepare my box sprite. Because the file contains more than one sprite, I change its sprite mode from single to multiple. I adjust the pixels per unit and change the mesh type from tight to full rect. Because I want my box to be pixel sharp, I change the filter mode and the compression as well. I apply the changes and enter the sprite editor. First, I'm using the automatic slicing to extract the sprite. Then I click on it to see its bounding box. If you look closely, you'll notice that in the middle of each of the edges, there is a small green point. Using those green points, we can slice the sprite a little bit more. This will help Unity understand where are the corners, where are the edges, and where's the center of the sprite. This way, when the box size changes, the corners will stay unscaled. The vertical edges will be scaled in Y-axis and the horizontal ones in X-axis. I try to keep all distinct features as a part of the corners, because I think they look much better when they are unscaled. Now I apply the changes and exit the sprite editor. Now I set the sprite we prepared as the source image of the image under the dialogue text. Make sure the image type is set to sliced. This will make the renderer use the information about the edges and corners. If you feel your bounding box is too thin or too thick, you can adjust its pixels per unit multiplier. Let's set the box to the right size. I click on the anchor settings and while holding Alt and Shift, I click on the stretch option. This makes the sprite occupy the whole space of the parent, in our case, the text. Awesome. Now I will add a little bit of margin by modifying the left, top, right and bottom values. Because we use the stretch option, the size of the box will change together with the text size. But well, there's a little problem. The size of the text object doesn't change when we add or remove lines of text. Luckily for us, there's a component called Content Size Fitter. Let's add it to our text. It has two properties, horizontal fit and vertical fit. If the value is set to unconstrained, we can freely modify the width and height. If we change any of them to preferred size, the related dimension will be locked. At the same time, however, it will be adjusted to fit the content size. And this is exactly what we need. If we start adding or removing lines of text, everything will work as expected. Awesome. Let's now add a little bit of functionality to our box. I add to the text new script. Simple dialog box. Inside of it I create a private field of type list of strings. I call it dialog lines. Because I will want to add them from the inspector, I make it serialized. I am also adding the text area attribute, which will change the simple string inputs into a little bit larger ones. This will make adding the lines a little bit easier. Now I add a field to represent the index of the line I am currently displaying and another one to store the text mesh pro reference. I set it in the start method by getting the component from the game object. We'll definitely want to hide and show the box, so let's add another simple component which will allow us to do exactly that. It's called canvas group. It will allow us to change the alpha of the text game object and all of its children. In our case, the bounding box image. Now inside of our script, let's add a field for the canvas group and let's get the reference to it inside the start method. 
And then initially let's hide the box by changing the alpha of the whole group to zero. Now let's add another private field of type boolean, this time to store the information if the dialog has started or not. Inside of our update method let's check if the left mouse button has been pressed. Of course in your game the situation might be slightly different. You may want to start the dialog on collision or when the character is in range. If you are using the default input system, here's a line of code that should be here instead. If that is the case, you should definitely learn about the new input system. You can check this tutorial out. If the dialog has not been started yet, we should set the text of the text mesh pro to the first line. Default value for the integer is zero, so this will work correctly. However, in case you would like to reset the value of the start field later on, let's set the line index to zero just before we use it first time. Now let's show our box by changing the alpha of the whole group to one. And of course, we cannot forget to change the started to true. In case the dialog has been already started and the line index is smaller than the number of lines, let's simply set the text to the next line. Here of course we have to make sure that the line index has been incremented. We can use for that the post increment operator. In case we used already all the lines, let's simply change the alpha of the whole group to zero. This will hide the box. Now in the Unity editor I re-enable the main camera and the background. I also adjust the anchor and position of the box. And of course on our simple dialog box script, I add several lines of the dialog. Let's test it out. Fantastic! There is one more small thing that annoys me. Anytime we change the dialog in the inspector, I would like the text object to show its first line. So for that, let's implement the onValidate method. Inside of it, let's first check if our dialog has any lines. If so, let's make sure we have the reference to the text mesh pro component and then let's set its text to the first dialog line. Let's have a look if it works. Awesome. During this tutorial, we quite heavily use the Text Mesh Pro component, which turns out has many more features than I expected. Christina has made an amazing video about some of them, and from what I'm aware, she's going to cover some more in the near future. If your game has any text, you should definitely go and check those videos out. And in the meantime, have a fantastic day, love you, and bye bye.